What's going on, Sumolings? It's Lindsay from AppSumo. Thank you for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. We're going to get going in just a minute, but I want to give everyone a second to trickle in. Uh, today we have Kim, who is the CEO of MailPoet, and Bruna, as she will be in the chat, leading support. Uh, MailPoet helps you stand out in any inbox by creating and delivering beautiful emails directly from WordPress. Uh, it's an awesome, super convenient tool, and we are very excited to dive into it today. MailPoet is available right now on AppSumo, uh, starting at just $49. Before I turn this over to Kim to give y'all a walkthrough, I'm just going to remind you of two quick things. Uh, the first is, is if you have any questions, you can uh, leave those questions in the Q&A box below. Again, Bruna will be down there, but we'll also uh, loop back to those questions at the end of the walkthrough. Um, so that everybody can hear those answers. And next, uh, we're going to send out a replay not long after we're finished recording. So if you need to jump out or if you feel like you haven't taken enough notes, you can relax. You can rewatch this webinar as often as you want. Um, all right, let's get started. Kim, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. It's a real pleasure. So I will quickly just do a walkthrough of Male Poet and uh, it is a labor of love of a team of 14 people. And uh, we've been around since we officially launched in 2012. So uh, it's been a lot of many years in the making. And uh, let's get right to it. So when you install MailPoet, you first have a very simple welcome wizard. So I'll just quickly go through it. Up, up, up. And so here we are. Uh, MailPoet allows you to send several types of emails. So first you have the standard newsletters, the welcome emails. So welcome emails would be like, thanks for signing up to our list. Then you have post notifications, uh, which is automatically send all your latest posts monthly, weekly, daily, or immediately to your subscribers. And then we have a bunch of WooCommerce uh, email types. So, First, let me go through the emails we have. So I'll just go and create a sample uh, standard newsletter. But first, so you have a choice, the choice here is there, right? So I'll just, for those who have WooCommerce, I'll just show you quickly what they are. Uh, we have abandoned cart, first purchase, purchase this product, purchase in this category. These are all automated emails. So I'll get back. And recently we added uh, a little tool to customize your default WooCommerce emails, such as invoices. So I'll go ahead and create a newsletter. Here we have different uh, templates. So MailPoint comes with 50 different templates. Uh, there, we found a, just a variety of styles for you to select from. So I'll just go ahead and I'll pick this one. Oh, well, we also classified them or categorized them. So. You can see some sample welcome emails, some sample post notification emails. If you like simple text, uh, we emulate a simple text email. And then you have your recently sent or your saved templates if you wanna reuse what you've done in the past. So I'll go ahead and select this one. So MailPoint's news editor is, uh, it's, slightly more, um, it's slightly simpler, let's say, than MailChimp. Uh, it has perhaps a little less design feature, but the convenient aspect of it is that it's very easy to learn. So if you have customers or clients that are not all that used to uh, designing their own things, they'll find it quite simple to, to do. So here you can add, basically, you can select and drag uh, content you want to add and edit it. You can add images from your content, from your website. You can add buttons, dividers, spacers, social bookmarks. You can add your posts. And then you can also add automated latest content. If you have a WooCommerce, you can add products. And we have header and footers. In terms of like these layouts, we have a, a variety of column types you can add. Um, MailPoet templates come with uh, default styles. So if you change, for example, decide to change the paragraph, so we'll say, okay, well, let's use open sound. It just changes all of them. So it's quite quick to, to change the design. 
So uh, that is for the newsletter editor. And then if you go to the last step, then you have, of course, just, you know, it's pretty, pretty fast and straightforward. You just pick your list, your subject line, and you send. The other thing with MailPoet is the signup forms. So this is actually a work in progress. Uh, we started to redesign our form editor earlier this year, and we have decided to go the Gutenberg way. So yes, Gutenberg is, uh, it is what it is. Some people love it, some people hate it. We, we found that it was a pretty decent block editor. And so we've started to rebuild our form editor around it. So this is an ongoing project. And right now the form editor is fairly simple. Uh, soon we'll be adding different types of forms like sliding, top bar, pop up, uh, which will appear here in the form placement. You'll have the choice of where to position your form. And then we'll also soon have um, sign up form templates, like pre designed templates for forms. So this is an ongoing project. In subscribers, Here's where all your subscribers are. So uh, this test site only has three. Uh, if you run a membership website, you do have, a, you do have uh, the WordPress users that show up. If you have WooCommerce customers, they do show up here as well. Um, then we have lists. So one of the main differences between male poets and many other emailing solutions is that there is no limits on lists at MailPoet. Uh, you can have as many lists as you want, and you can just, uh, a subscriber can be in different lists, and you can actually send a single email to different lists at once. So if your subscriber is on two lists, he'll only get the email once. So. Then we have segments. Uh, segments is just a, uh, it's still a, in many ways an MVP. We still have to extend it, but we have, if you want to ex uh, take a few lists and decide to segment based on like roles. So if we say, for example, oh, segment email, uh, who opened uh, some of the previous emails we sent, right? So uh, this is a, a pretty straightforward uh, feature of segmenting. We did get a lot of requests for more segments. So we are always, we are looking for feedback on what segments you'd like to add. So. I'll get to that a little later. Now for the settings. Uh, we built MailPoet to really work without changing the settings. So the first time you install MailPoet, you could actually just import your list and start uh, designing and sending within one hour. That was our goal. Can, can someone take MailPoet over, install it, and get going? So you don't really have to change anything here. Uh, uh, unless you want to change, of course, the sending method. Now, AppSumo users will have keys that, you'll, uh, that they'll have for each website, and those keys allows you to download the premium add-on, which gives you some of the detailed stats. We'll get to that afterwards. And uh, it will also allow sending uh, through, our mail, through MailPoint's own sending servers. So I'll get to that as well in a bit. There's nothing here. There's uh, our, our settings are meant to be. We really haven't, we try not to add anything more to the settings and try to keep them simple. So we have the send with confirmation email, the send with. So if you are an AppSumo customer, you'll be sending with our sending service. So what is our sending service? So three years ago, we went out to build our own emailing in email infrastructure. So we built, if you like, our own little Amazon SES or SendGrid. Um, so what is the advantage of us uh, delivering your emails? Well, first, we control everything. So if there is an issue with any one of your lists or there's a deliverability problem, you are able to contact support and say, hey, that user never got my email. How is that? You know? This is not a service you'll get anywhere else. Uh, so we have to be able to control our own reputation and our own sending is a real true advantage. Uh, the other advantage of having built our own sending infrastructure is that we knew that if we had white labeled, let's say Amazon SES, uh, it would be just a lot slower. Uh, building our own infrastructure made sending from WordPress a whole lot faster, like really much faster. 
So at MailPoet, we have some users with lists of 100,000, 150,000 subscribers, and they can send to their whole list within like an hour. So most lists will be around 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, 20,000 subscribers. And that really just takes a few minutes to send through our sending service. Now you can, of course, with each website send, I mean, you can send with Amazon SES or SendGrid or even your SMTP, um, but they will be significantly slower. There'll be like one email per second. So you're, you know, we have actually, you have like, the, you can set the frequency here, but it is slower and you have to set up your SPF as well. You know? With uh, MailPoet, we take care of the SPF, we take care of DICM, uh, all the signatures. So it's pretty like plug and play, like toggle on and works. So now I'll move on. WooCommerce. So here are a few of the WooCommerce features we have. So you can customize, as I said earlier, you can customize your WooCommerce uh, default emails, like invoices, et cetera. So basically it, it's, so, so you know, it just, it's, there's one template for WooCommerce and our editor changes that single template. So if you change it with, if you change it within our email editor, it will change all your, your WooCommerce emails. Um, Opt-in on checkout. So that's like the right way to do the G GDPR right way to do things. Like, would you like to join our lists? Um, and then we have some uh, other, some other settings. I'll now jump to advanced. There are a few things that you need to be aware in advance. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say three things. The first one is the, the cron. So if you run a WordPress website, you're fully aware that cron can be like uh, not that uh, reliable. So uh, we have, so the base, the, the default one is visitors to your website. So that is how WordPress, WordPress own cron works. Now we built our own script, which calls itself. And even if your site doesn't get a lot of traffic, you can actually just mail poet just calls itself incessantly. And then that will make sure that your emails are sent. The batches of emails you send are always on time. Of course, there's a server side Linux cron as well. And the other things I wanted to point out is this. This is uh, we launched this earlier this year. So. A lot of you guys that uh, have been doing WordPress websites, you know that uh, all the emails that are sent from WordPress or your WooCommerce uh, might get lost or have deliverability issues. So to circumvent that issue, you just uh, install an SMTP plugin. So basically this option is like, well, you don't need an SMTP plugin anymore. You can just say, hey, well, like have MailPoet send like my emails as well. So if you're sending with SendGrid, I'll send with SendGrid. If you're sending with, if you're sending with MailPoet, I'll send with MailPoet. So one less plugin for you to install. And then this last feature I want to point out is stop sending to your inactive subscribers. So now no other email company offers this. Uh, Basically, it's like best standard practice is that every six months or a year, you purge your list, uh, you clean it from all the subscribers that haven't opened your emails. Now, this is like a manual task and it takes a long time and most people don't know really how to do it or even think about it. So we've been recommending this for years and then, but then no one was really doing it automatically. So we said, hey, why don't we just like offer it like out of the box, you know, because we're, we're constantly asking people to have basic lists of hygiene. This is one of the top recommendations and no one's doing it. So we launched this, we launched this feature last year, like 95% of our users have kept it active uh, and their lists are like what happens, the first thing that happens is your list, if your list is like a year old, you'll have like, you know, 30% inactive, you know? Uh, if your list is like three years old, you'll have like 40, 50% inactive. So two things happen. Your open, look, you send to less people, your open rates go up and your, reputa your own reputation as a sender is like, is, gets better. So Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, they will all look at uh, user engagement as a indicator of a healthy list. So this helps you maintain that list. I have to say like a lot of our users that have like, have had like lists of like 
five, 10,000, and suddenly their list has shrunk like crazy. They're like, at first it's, it's, a, it's a shock. And then afterwards you're like, well, I'm actually only really sending to the really active people. A, it's costing me less money. Two, it's done automatically. And I know that my, uh, I know that Mel quite keeps my list forever clean, you know? Now, for any of the reason you don't want this option, you can always turn it off. So uh, let's say you know that you have a whole bunch of users that have like email clients that don't really open, like they're open, but it doesn't track for some reason. You can just turn it off, that's fine. You know? um, what else? Uh, that's pretty much the, the showcase here. Um, hey, shoot your questions. I'm all ears. Absolutely. Thank you so much for going through those. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, Bruna has been doing a great job of answering questions in the chat, um, but I'm going to go through some of them um, just to make sure that they are answered here as well. Um, so first I want to uh, just really quickly say that, uh, or I just want to quickly address the a big question that happened uh, in the Q and A, which is actually about the wish list membership integration. And I want to talk about just integrations in general, since that's a big thing that Sumo Langs love. Can you tell us a little bit about integrations and specifically um, any upcoming plans with wish list? Well, that's a good question. So uh, we were warned that uh, one of the main one of the main requests we get was integrations, and so uh, so we so what we did is we set up like we set up a uh, here it is. I'll just show it on my screen. We set up a, a feature request board for the AppSumo uh, deal. So. Uh, and we love it. So it's great. You guys have like tons of feature requests. So, uh, so right now uh, we are still observing. Like we're still looking at who's voting for what, and based on that, we'll take a decision later on what integrations we want to prioritize. So, hey, all I can say is go to our. This is the address here. Go to mailpoint.canny.io and like upvote your integrations, and we'll consider it. That is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and the next question that showed up a bit on the deal page, I want to ask y'all about um, your spam policy. And uh, I believe that it was slightly misunderstood on the deal page. So if you can just clarify that for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it kind of blew up. We were like, what? That was never an issue until half sumo. So, <laughs> um, so here's how, here's how, uh, here's how it works. So if you buy an agency license and one of your website starts to send, like one of your clients starts to send spam, we do pause your entire account. Uh, now, we don't cancel your account. Uh, we don't uh, suspend your account. We don't punish you. We just pause it. And uh, there's no email loss. We're just, we just pause it to see if there is like a leak or an abuse. You have to understand if you do email and you manage your own deliverability like we do, we are very much a target of uh, bad actors. So uh, MailPoint is extra careful to make sure that we have the highest deliverability rate possible. So this is why we're, uh, we can appear uh, to be a bit like strict. But we're not strict. We're there. We're, we're actually there to work with people to mitigate issues, and we do it fairly fast. So, and the ultimate goal here is that your list or your client's list is always the best it can be. So we work really hard to do that. And so, if it does happen, because it does happen that there will be one like, you know, bad, you know, bad sending. Uh, we'll just work on figuring out why did it happen and what do we do to solve it, you know? So in many ways, it's like a concierge service of deliverability, which you would not get like at Amazon SCS or at MailChimp. You can't actually talk to anyone there and say, hey, how do I mitigate my issue here? You actually can do that with us. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So how often does that happen? Do, how often do people get like, like suspended, well, it's not even suspended, just paused, you know? Um, 
it doesn't happen that often. It usually happens the first time someone sends with us. So they import their list that's from another platform. Uh, that platform wasn't taking care of the inactives, uh, the bounce, the hard bounces weren't really considered. And suddenly they come and they try to send mail with MailPoint the first time. And suddenly like our system said, hey, hold on, this list is like not really clean. So this is where we are like, this is where we work with each user saying, okay, let's try to resolve this and have the cleanest list possible. So from now forward, you have really the best list you can have. So it's not a list cleaning service, but it's like education and just consultancy around what's the next step, that's it. Awesome. Um, we had some more questions about just uh, different WordPress tools. So uh, one question was, does this integrate with Elementor? And then the other question on the other side is, um, what if you don't use Gutenberg, are you still able to build a form? Yeah, correct. Good question. So yes, we have a small, uh, we have an integration with Elementor. So you can add, uh, uh, you can add a sign up, uh, MailPoint sign up form in Elementor. Uh, we also have uh, a Gutenberg block uh, form. So you, you can, if, or, and short code. So actually you can, whenever, wherever you are in your WordPress website, you can actually show your form. Uh, we have iframe forms as well, PHP versions of the forms. Uh, so that's for that answer. And then for the other one regarding Gutenberg, yes, if you have, if you have, uh, if you disabled Gutenberg by installing the classic editor, you can still use our form editor because we actually just, so basically MailPoint took its, takes Gutenberg and includes it in its own uh, software package. So, if you have, even if you have an older version of WordPress that doesn't use Gutenberg, you will be able to use our form editor. Awesome. We have uh, a couple questions about automatic emails. So is it, uh, the first one is, is it possible to send an email automatically to a list when a new product is published on a WooCommerce store? And the other was, can an email go out automatically with a blog? Okay, so automatic emails. Uh, so for the first question on WooCommerce, if a new product is published, uh, can we send that automatically to subscribers? Actually, we don't have that, and it's the first time I hear about it. So it'd be great if you could add it to the feature request board. And uh, the more of the, so basically I'll give you like the, where we're standing on. So we spent a lot of last year building WooCommerce tools. We took a little pause right now. And we're uh, interviewing WooCommerce customers right now and, and getting feedback to see how we can improve the tools and the features that we have around WooCommerce. So if you are a WooCommerce user out there, please go to, please add your feature requests. We wanna hear them. Uh, we might actually get in touch to interview you. So I'm running interviews right now with several WooCommerce customers. Um, and the second question was, uh, yeah, blog posts. Uh, yeah, we do basically, yes, you can send when you have a new, uh, when you're publishing new posts, you can send those automatic, automatically. I'll just show you here again, I'll just up, up, up. So in post notifications, uh, there aren't any here. So yeah, here's one here. The last newsletter post from our blog. So, uh, there's no list selected, but you can say, oh, well, send uh, the last five posts of this week to all subscribers on Friday. And uh, so if you publish a lot of content, uh, this is a really practical, it's a, it's a basic automatic tool that saves you a lot of time. A lot of media websites use MailPoet in this automatic fashion. They set it up once and it's like, forget. And uh, since MailPoet has unlimited amount of emails per account, we calculate subscribers in our plans, not the amount of emails. So we have like, there's a few media websites that we work with. They send like, they send like two emails per day to their lists of like a hundred thousand. So it's, uh, it's, and it's no work. So it's great. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we had some questions. Do you have a double opt-in? Yeah, we do. Uh, in fact, it's kind of mandatory. Uh, if you're so, basically there's two rules, there's two ways to go about it. Here it is in the settings. 
sorry, here. Now, if you are sending your emails with through our sending infrastructure, we force you to do double opt-in. Uh, this is a basic GDPR requirement. So it's kind of a proof of consent. So um, the Europeans were asking, hey, well, are, do you have proof that you're sending emails to, to do you have proof that, you're, that the person asked to get your emails? Double opt-in uh, uh, is that proof if you want. Um, so we do enforce it. Now, if you send with your own, um, if you're sending with your host or uh, Amazon or whatever your thing, then you can actually turn it off if you want. So some people that run like membership websites prefer to turn it off, you know, but in that case, they need to send to their host or third party. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, just a question. Um, is there an official roadmap available for people to look at? Uh, that's a good question. No, there isn't. Uh, why? Why don't we have a public roadmap? Actually, maybe we should. Um, the reason why we don't have a roadmap is we work by quarters. So uh, we have the next quarter, we're planning right now the next quarter and our visibility from like uh, July forward is quite, or it's quite, it's quite, it's not there. It's a very short sighted. So we keep, uh, we have a development philosophy to really look just like three months ahead at a time. Okay. Uh, but I will answer if you're wondering what we'll be working on, uh, we are working on a few things. So what is planned ahead? Finish the form editor. So it's like we have a, a nice tidy form editor. So people don't need to install another plugin for like a nice sign up form. We want to be a true one stop shop, if you like. So we're working on the form editor. We're working on a UI and UX redesign of our interface. So we've had the same inter like we have the same interface that we've had for the last couple of years. We want to. We want to renew it. It's getting a little old, we feel. So we're spending quite a bit of time on this UI UX redesign. That's like a major project, so quite challenging. And then we are working on improving the sender score. So I was, we were talking about, hey, how do you like manage the deliverability of each of your users? We're working right now on making it just a little better. So uh, we're changing, if you want, the algorithm of how we uh, observe our users and what kind of like complaints they get, what bounce rate they get, et cetera. So that's a work in progress. Awesome. Um, this one says, if we want to upgrade later in case our subscribers grow a lot, do we get a special AppSumo upgrade plan? <laughs> There's a few people who asked for that. Uh, we love special so, AppSumo plans around here. I figured I'd ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, the AppSumo deal is like, I, I, I wrote that in the AppSumo page. Uh, even my colleagues at MailPod were like, are you sure you're going to give that deal? I mean, it's like a steal. <laughs> and we were like, well, yeah, I know, but uh, it's like a new way to reach out to people who've never heard about us. So, yeah. So yeah, to answer the question, uh, yeah, we are considering it. Uh, we have uh, we have to let's see how many people like sign up for it. like if a lot of people ask for it, then we'll like uh, set up a new uh, product that's like more streamlined. And if we get just a few people asking for it, uh, uh, then we'll just uh, we ha we have ways to generate more codes uh, and changing adding products. So we just talk to us and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll find a way. We, we all appreciate that. Um, we have a question uh, about the concept of segments. What is it used for? Can you give an example? Right now, segments is like, our segment is uh, fairly simple. It's like, oh, can, uh, can you, oh, I can just open up here. Uh, can you, I want to email everyone that uh, did not open the last email. That's like a segment you can do on. Uh, or open the last email, uh, or clicked on this link, or clicked on that link. Who, like, I want to email everyone that clicked on that particular action, that, uh, that particular button in the last newsletter I sent. 
you can do that. So you have like basic, uh, you can, you have WordPress user roles. So if you manage a large membership website, you can decide, like I want to send to all the authors, for example. And then we have a few for WooCommerce, you know? So, oh, I want to send a single email uh, to whoever pr purchases product, for example, or in this category of product. So, um, as I said earlier, uh, we want to extend this. Uh, this is like an MVP for us. Uh, so minimum, it's a light version. We want to improve this. So if you have any seg segmentation requests, uh, make sure you add it to our feedback board. So. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, s people are still asking about wish list. Um, my, uh, where did it go? I had a question ready and it just scrolled away. Um, so if somebody wants to know about the deal itself. Can, can they buy the deal if they're using a free account? Um, yes, you can. Officially, uh, yeah, this is a, this was uh, for a new user, so it was, uh, but you can actually, yes, you can, you are, you can redeem the code. All right. Mm. Um, oh, hang on, oh, okay. Um, is MailPoet list focused or tagged focused? And uh, can I tag different subscribers and if it's list focused is the same subscriber on multiple list count as one subscriber or more than one uh good question <laughs> a very well formulated question uh it is list focused and one subscriber on two lists or three lists or etc only counts as one subscriber so if you're a mailchimp user you'll understand that mail poet in that regards is much cheaper Excellent. We love that. All right. Tom's got some WooCommerce abilities. So uh, questions. Does it replace all WooCommerce emails? Well, uh, so there is, that's a good, so, okay, good question. Yes, MailPoet can do almost, like right now, it can, you can redesign your your default WooCommerce emails, uh, at least a template for them. Uh, and you can add abandoned, MailPoet has abandoned card, you can do some uh, automatic emails. So we, it does pretty much, and, and now that, that, now that MailPoet can also send the emails that are sent from WooCommerce, actually do the delivery of them, uh, it's pretty much, we're getting closer to a one-stop shop. Like if you use MailPoet, you might not need to actually use any other plugin, you know? So of course it depends, uh, WooCommerce users have very specific needs at times, depending on what products they, they sell and what triggers they need. So some triggers might not, uh, might not be available in MailPoet. Uh, so it kind of you kind of have to go and discover yourself and say, oh, does that fit my bill? You know. So as I said earlier, though, we are looking for WooCommerce feedback. So if you see something that would be great to add in WooCommerce uh, in MailPoet for WooCommerce, do let us know. We're interested. Yeah, um, they they also asked about MailPoet replacing PDF invoices by WooCommerce and sending PDF vouchers by MailPoet. Right, that's a, that's a no-no for us. We don't, uh, that's a limitation that we will not change. MailPoet doesn't, uh, we don't allow sending uh, attachments. Why? Okay. Uh, some people will ask why. So I, uh, uh, why? Because attachments are bandwidth heavy. Uh, they can be seen by spam filters as uh, edgy for, um, for viruses and other uh, the, the things like that. So starting to send, uh, for us to start sending a whole bunch of attachments for which we don't control the security or we'd have to add security is, is a huge undertaking that we don't want to go into. So what we tell our users is like, avoid sending, if you can, mm -hmm. avoid sending uh, attachments, instead link to your attachments. Sure. Provide a link in the email to that attachment. Hmm. All right. 
that's thank you for that. Um, I have some questions about integrations. Um, uh, the word thrive has come up a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, do you integrate with thrive apprentice? Uh, I think uh, that's, thrive is one of the biggest has become one of the biggest out there. Uh, I believe that's it. I I'd have to check. I'm not even sure. I think Thrive does uh, work with me. Yeah, I think it does work with male poets. Um, this said, if we do a great job with our form editor, you might not need Thrive. <laughs> so. <we'll see. laughs> Um, great. Yeah. Uh, the, the other one is about WeForms, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We integrate with WeForms. Uh, I was in, actually I was exchanging with them last week. Uh, I think they need to do a small update for it to work even better, but, um, that's a conversation I've started and it's not finished yet. So, uh, something to double check and guys that one of the best ways, the way it works, uh, between us plugin authors uh, is like if you have a request like hey male poet should integrate with like we forms uh, it's really good to ask us but also ask them you know because uh, they look at they look at their own user base or customer base as feedback so we always encourage our users to also go hassle the other plugin authors excellent I'm going to go through just a few more, um, but everybody keep that in mind. You can also ask the other side. Um, what about WordPress forms or WP form? Uh, WordPress forms uh, actually doesn't, uh, as far as I know, doesn't connect with us. And because uh, I saw that question in AppSumo last week and I, mm -hmm. I checked and I was surprised it doesn't. So, because I know the authors of uh, WP form. So, yeah. Uh, I saw it's also in the feature request, so I'll reach out to them and touch base and ask for it because WP Forms has become a pretty standard uh, plugin out there and it should really uh, connect with Nailpoet. Uh, what about cart flows? Uh, we don't uh, do, no, we don't do cart flows. What about happy form? Uh, we don't do happy forms. If anybody is, else has, uh, we got Zapier. Yeah, Zapier. Uh, we, uh, no, so we, we don't work with Zapier, and that was a big topic of conversation. Um, let's see how many people vote. I see that it's being upvoted on our feature. Uh, we did not, our, before AppSumo, we didn't get the request. We actually, we never really got the request for Zapier. Uh, now that AppSumo has, a, AppSumo brought a whole like, new uh, world to us. Uh, now that uh, AppSumo users have been asking for it, we, we will consider it. Uh, so I saw it's in the feature request board. So upvote it if you want it. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to keep going through these. Uh, Integromat. Yeah, no. If you guys, guys, <laughs> guys and girls, uh, here's, here's a... I'll yeah, direct us, because I also have questions yeah, about... Yeah. So we everybody's have... been submitting them as we're going through these. Um, <laughs> Course, yeah, yeah, of course. I guess the best way to, to uh, in the footer of our website, so mailpoet.com, you can actually look at, um, here it is, plugins and integration. So on this page, I listed the 20 or so forms and plugins that work with us, you know, and. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So. Wonderful. So y'all can check out that. Um, there are questions about Thrive Cart and Thrive Themes and Salesforce and ConvertBox. I want everybody to know that we've we've seen them. Yeah, and, great, great. And <laughs> there, is, uh, there is so much uh, integrations request since we were on AppSumo. It's like, wow, I mean, we could, uh, the easiest out there would be probably Zapier because Zapier is already in the middle of all these, of many of these software. So anyway, Keep on pushing for those requests and we'll consider them. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. And thank you. This is the, and of course the AppSumo community loves giving feedback and is always very helpful. So it is appreciated. Um, we have some, a few more questions and if anybody has any questions, go ahead and you can put them in the chat or the Q and A. I'm going to answer the ones that have just recently come in. Um, if it hasn't been answered already, I'm so sorry to have missed it. There've been a lot of questions. So just go ahead and send it again. Um, so the next one is, what should we do if we need more than 50,000 users? 
uh, well, that extends, it's, a, it's basically like the same, uh, if you need more than 150,000 users, then you'd have to follow, you'd have uh, to go on to our regular plans. Now, of course, those are much more expensive than, uh, than the app Sumo deal. So um, whoever wrote that, just write to us in our, just write to us, we're curious to know more about your list. So we can cut you a deal if you want. Thank you. Um, can you send out emails when you write a new post to WordPress, like Jetpack subscribe functionality? Yes, that's the, it's the same, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, I think if I understand correctly, it's uh, how do you send my post automatically? Uh, yes, it's this, we have that and we can send your post automatically, correct. All right, can you recap how a double plan works for unlimited websites? A double plan, so you mean like double codes, right? I, I think so. It, uh, so they, there were a couple other questions in the same group, so let me go through all of them and, and maybe there's clarity altogether. Can I have 10 websites with 10,000 signups on each website? And how does 10K limit work with the two plans I bought? Right. So I, I would guess plan here means code. So if you bought yeah. two codes, you get 10,000 subscribers. So uh, it's easy. You can, you can, each website gets up to 10,000 subscribers. And for those 10,000 subscribers, you can send an unlimited amount of emails. And uh, you can install on, on, on an unlimited amount of WordPress websites. So it's a pretty good deal. Mm. Great. Um, GDPR question. Since you're based in France, we should have no GDPR issues. Are all your servers and services EU based? Uh, very good question. Uh, so on our, so first things first, um, we do have at the bottom of our website, uh, we do have our privacy notice. And our privacy notice uh, explains what plugin, like what does the plugin collect and send back? So that, that's, it does nothing actually. So it's pretty clean. You own your list. We don't keep a, you, honestly, we don't keep a copy of your list. We, even if you send with us, we don't, we don't have your list. We just have a trace of what email you sent and what, uh, so not the contents of your email, but what happened to that email. So in fact, uh, we don't really have any of your personal data or even the contents of your email. So in this page, in the privacy notice page, you can go through it and like, okay, so what are the sending service collect? You know, email, email address, names, IP address. Uh, what are the third party services and their location? Like, oh, so like we use like Linode, our server, they're based in England. So you have the whole list there, you know? And we are GDPR as a business, we are GDPR client. So you have the right to be forgotten. So if you write to us, you say, hey, I don't want MailPoet to have any data on me. So we just anonymize your account and then we don't know who you are anymore, so. Excellent. Um, I do wanna, a few people have asked, um, we will be sending a replay link. We'll also be posting this webinar on YouTube. So you can watch this a gazillion times if you want, I promise. Um, the next question, can we use Gmail, um, as our host instead of MailPoet? No, Gmail doesn't allow you to, Gmail doesn't, uh, it's, a. Uh, you cannot, uh, Gmail doesn't allow a third party to send emails on their behalf. That would be like, um, so you can't say, hey, MailPoet, plug to my Gmail and then Gmail will send the emails for me. Right. You can't do that because they block it. Uh, it's, it's an anti-phishing or anti-impersonification. Imperson, if I got the word, word right. <laughs> anyway, it's just, a, it's just a, it's a security issue. They won't allow it, so. Okay. Um, will it work? Da, 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 da. Okay, SiteGround server, will it work to send through MailPoet server or is it a cron job? I understand every third of those words. <laughs> right. There is another question, though, um, to talk more about the C R O N cron settings. You, you yeah. Do. So, uh, so 
We have a great knowledge base. So look, uh, I will give you the short answer for a site ground. For, to work with SiteGround, you need to set up a cron uh, task on your server. And the only thing that's like a little annoying with SiteGround is that the cron can only run every 30 minutes. It's a limitation they have, which is rather strange because no other hosts have that limitation. But um, you can actually run that cron and then it'll check every 30 minutes to make sure it sends emails. So, uh, there might be a slight delay, but it's still possible to set it up. So uh, we worked with the SiteGround team to make sure that it worked fine. So, uh, so if you're a SiteGround user, yes, you can use MailPoet. And Wonderful. regarding cron in general, mm -hmm. so I'll just point to our, we have a, a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, knowledge base here. I'll just say, a cron. So it, it, we have a what is the newsletter task scheduler? So this explains like your cron options, you know, the three options that you have in the settings, you know. So it walks you through the advantages uh, of each and what you want to set up. Uh, honestly, um, Cron in the WordPress world has always been kind of a drag and a challenge, mm -hmm. but the way we've built ours and the options there are, that is a non-issue for our users today. Like back in the days, we'd get a lot of questions, like it'd be an issue that we'd have to solve on support. And uh, the way we built it today is it works for 99% of the users. So. Mm -hmm. um, about that, is there a minimum visitor count on a site for MailPoet to be triggered um, if they're using cron? Uh, well, you just uh, one. So if you're doing the visitors to your website, yeah, you need at least one visitor to come to your website whenever, you know, MailPoet or even WordPress has something, a task to get done, uh, that visitor needs to trigger it. So you'd have to have at least one visitor, I don't know, like for five minutes or for 10 minutes for something to be triggered, you know? Okay, that's, that's great. That was an earlier question. I'm glad that we got to, yeah, to answer so, that one. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just point out, we usually recommend uh, our users to, to set up the MailPoet's own script. Uh, this, this option uh, I'm highlighting on my screen, that just, uh, that, that's MailPoet calling itself so you can like, you don't need visitors to your website. You don't need to have your admin open. You just let MailPoet constantly call itself in the background. And that will ensure your emails are always sent on time, you know, so. Awesome. That works for almost all the hosts except SiteGround. Okay. Um, can you show where in the settings to set up third party sending? Yeah. Thank you. So, on my screen. Now I have yeah. the mail thread sending service activated. Uh, I'll activate the other. So other is uh, host, etc. So here you select your method and here you have all your sub options. So you can select, you can send with SMTP. We don't particularly recommend SMTP, but um, um, better use uh, Amazon SCS or SendGrid if you like. And then you have like sub options for each, you know, so, you know, you can set your frequency, uh, what, what is recommended, or if you know that Amazon SCS can send a lot more emails, you can say, hey, send like a hundred, uh, I don't know, 50 emails every two minutes, and that's like 36,000 emails a day, you know, and then you have a uh, just your configuration, so. Excellent. Um, oh, where did my question go? Oh, uh. Nope, where to go? Oh, can MailPoet be used as an autoresponder and drip campaigns? It can. Um, so when you go and uh, what we call welcome emails, uh, you can actually set up a series of welcome emails. I'll give you an example here. Um, MailPoet has, if you, when you join MailPoet, uh, you, are, you can be added to a list and we have an email course as well. You know? So you can actually see like lesson one, sending your first newsletter, sending uh, lesson two, uh, 
open and click rates and so forth, lesson three, lesson four. And here you see like, oh, when someone, this newsletter is sent when someone subscribes to the list, like four part email course one day after. So here I've set up a drip campaign using welcome emails in Mailpoet, you know? So, and they're great, they get like super high uh, open and click rates, you know? Yeah, so. awesome. Um, what is the best way to manage site backup and subscribers who unsubscribe? Uh, well, site backups, we don't, uh, you need to have your own, you need to have your own back, uh, backup service. So either like a plugin or your host. So, uh, as for your, uh, as for your subscribers, they're kind of auto managed. So when, when you, every email that's sent with MailPoet will add like, Hey, um, uh, we'll add in a footer, like an unsubscribe link, right? So you'll get to like, uh, subscribers can manage their own subscription, basically. Once they subscribe, they can unsubscribe, they can add themselves to another list or et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is uh, an example of our own <clears throat> subscribers page on mailpoet.com. So you can see like, uh, how many unconfirmed, how many unsubscribed, how many inactive, how many bounced, how many mm -hmm. trashed, so. Excellent. Um, um, from the same user, they want to know, is there an option for an email sequence? If any new subscribers will automatically get 10 emails in a set sequence spread out over 30 days, for instance. Yeah, that's the same as uh, drip campaigns. Yeah. So email sequence and drip campaigns, as, as I've shown here, you can actually do a sequence or a drip campaign Great. Um. Excellent, excellent. All right, if anybody has any more questions, there have been quite a few today and I am grateful and I'm sure you are for every single one. Um, I'm gonna take any last minute questions right now. We have one just came in from Amy. Does MailPoet support multiple opt-in forms for different lead magnets and then different lists? Yeah, you can, I mean, yeah, you can have as many forms as you want for as many lists as you want. So, Excellent. Um, it just, uh, then it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. This one, they, they prefaced it by saying, silly one. Is the AppSumo deal for MailPoet 2 or 3? Oh, that's a good question. It's for MailPoet 3, so. Uh, Not a silly question. No such thing. Thank you, Kristen. All right. Um, I think we are about ready to wrap up. If you all have any more questions, you can definitely leave them on the deal page. I'm going to turn my camera on again and you all are about to realize that I am not Chris. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, that's all we've got to We've got for today. Mail Poet offers you beautiful customizable email templates and easy to use drag and drop email editor. It could not be more convenient. Sumo Langs, if you've not already redeemed your code for Mail Poet, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I highly recommend you head over to appsumo.com slash mailpoet. Uh, it's starting at just $49. It's backed by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can set up, play around with it. Let us know how it works for you. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them on the deal page. Um, and of course, leave us some comments. Let us know how it's going. And we definitely look forward to seeing what you create. Thank you, Kim, for joining us. Pleasure's all mine. You are awesome. Thank you all so much. Um, we've had a lot of you participating today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Have a great day.